Hey guys, let's do the um, frequency separation tutorial. This is time consuming for sure. Um, I really only do it on portraits. If I'm doing like a couple session or whatever, I, I don't bother with this because it just would take way too much time. But for a portrait like this where I, one, have her in really harsh light so you can see every pore, and two, um, you know, it's, it's her wedding day so I wanna give her something really special. I will do this. So here we're in Lightroom, but I've already pulled my photos into Photoshop. And how you can do that, if you haven't seen this before, is download Photoshop, come to Photo, Edit In, and then Photoshop. And that will just pull it straight into Photoshop as a raw image um, with your Lightroom adjustments applied. Okay, so we're just going to get started. I'm not going to describe the reasoning behind all of this because I think that it's unnecessary. All you really need to know is the steps. Um, I'm gonna, you know, explain it the best I can, but I don't want to, you know, throw a bunch of um, like technology at you that confuses you. So we're just gonna do the steps and I'll show you exactly how to make it look perfect. So, and also I've watched a ton of YouTube tutorials trying to see if anybody does it the same way that I do. And I have not found anyone that does yet. So. Um, this will be a little bit different from other tutorials you've seen, but I promise this is the best way and the way that makes it look the best to me. Okay, so first we're going to start by creating two extra layers. So um, you can either come up to layer and um, duplicate layer, or you can just hit control J and then we're going to hit control J again. So now we have all the layers we need for this. Okay, this middle layer here, we're going to rename to color. Okay, and all you have to do is click on where it says layer copy, click on it and it'll open up a um, little um, box where you can type. And then the top one we're gonna name texture. Okay, next step is to prepare our layers. So we're gonna turn the top layer off and we're gonna click on the color layer. Okay, now we come up to filter, um, blur, Gaussian blur, click there. And our goal here is to just blur the skin enough so that you can't see the pores. I Nothing above 10, I would say. I would probably, for this one, maybe around 8 looks good to me. Right about there, I have it at 8.2. That looks good. And just use your judgment. You don't. Here's what you don't want. You don't want it up like, like this where you can't see anything. Um, you don't want it like that and you don't want it down like this. You really wanna just smooth that skin out so you can't see um, a whole lot of the texture. So why don't I put mine at about, yeah, I'm gonna go with about 8.2. Okay, so now our color layer is prepared. Now we're gonna come back up to texture, click on that, turn it back on, and come up to image, apply image, Okay, and th this will bring up this little box here. And what we want to do first is come to this layer um, drop down, choose your color layer. And I already have my blending mode changed to subtract. It may default to normal or something else, but you want to come to blending and make sure that it's on subtract. And then for these boxes down here, you're going to put your opacity at 100, your scale at 2, and your offset at 128. Don't worry about these boxes here. So now your apply image box is, is um, perfect. Just click OK. OK, so now you can see all that texture, and that's what we want to see. Now we need to get it back to looking normal. So we come up to make sure your, well, your texture layer will be clicked if, it ha you know, if you haven't done anything else. But um, we're going to change the blending mode here. So we're going to come to, um, where is it, linear light. And now we're ready to work. So the first thing we're going to do here is I like to turn my texture layer off. And that's going to take us back to just seeing our color layer. So make sure you're clicked on the color layer. And now our goal is to smooth out and even out all this color and shadow. We want it to be one really nice even palette. Um, anything we do on this layer will not affect the texture we see here won't affect it at all and that's good that's what we want um so yep we're gonna this is a little splotchy here it's probably partly her makeup hasn't been fully blended and then she has sort of a smudge down here of makeup that i'm going to clean up um you can use this for like dark circles too 
anywhere you see, like even this shadow, I could soften that up a little bit. But what I would suggest is not going too overboard on this. You don't want the skin to lose all of its dimension. You do want to still see some of these shadows and highlights. We're just going to kind of smooth these edges um, so that it looks really clean. And here's how we're going to do it. I like to use both the um, healing tool and the clone tool, but I always start with the healing tool. And if you'll um, uh, right click, you can come down. It will probably default to spot healing brush tool, but you want the healing brush tool. So click there. I'm going to zoom in a little further and I'll show you how I do it. Um, I want my brush a little bit bigger. So if you come up to the top here and just click this little fuzzy circle, you can um, change the size of your brush and make sure your hardness is at zero because you want really soft edges. And that's all you have to worry about there. So what we're going to do is see, I'll show you what happens if you just click. It's saying alt click to define a source point to be used to repair the image. So what we need to do <clears throat> is um, choose a color to start blending. So I'm going to click right here in the middle and just alt click and then I'm going to start blending those colors out. And what this is doing is it's kind of a combination between the um, cloning tool where you pick a, a patch of skin and then you paste it onto another patch of skin and the healing spot healing brush which is just sort of um, Photoshop's AI you know, doing its thing and figuring it out automatically. This is a good combination because it does the healing, but it also lets you choose where the source is, basically. So um, what I do for this is I will keep my index finger, my left index finger on the Alt key um, while I'm clicking with my right hand and the mouse. And that um, lets me continuously sort of change my, um, my source spot. So I'm just clicking and smoothing that out. And you'll see as you go kind of what this does. Um, and yeah, I say this every time, you guys, but on a screen recording, you don't get the full effect of what I'm doing. But when you do this in real life, you'll definitely be able to see as you're going sort of how it's smoothing everything out. So anywhere that looks darker or looks um, uneven, I'm just clicking with my index finger on alt and then um, and um, clicking with my mouse and, and the goal here is is to sort of blend all, mix all of these colors together and that's why I sort of continuously will pick a new source so that I'm not just using one color to blend I'm using all sorts of different colors to blend if that makes sense and that will give you a really natural looking um, even finish. And this is really relaxing. If you are someone who um, is like a little bit neurotic like I am and I really like, like I love symmetry and um, like it's fun for me to sweep the floor and like vacuum. <laughs> this is making me sound crazy, but you know what I mean? Just like tasks like that, that you can see an improvement you know what I mean like you can see good things happening I, I, it's hard for me to also like edit and like um, say what's on my mind at the same time because I'm trying to focus on both so excuse me if I sound weird but you know what I mean just like those little tasks that ah, I don't know like vacuuming and being able to see the lines as you go you know what I mean like the lines on the carpet or um, what's another good example um, <clears throat> Oh, I'm thinking of it. I can't think of the word. Um, oh, like mowing the lawn. And you can, like, you're mowing and the, you see the lines in the grass. Like, this is what that's like for me. Just, like, really super relaxing. So, in that sense, it's not, like, I like doing it because um, it's just really satisfying to see, see the changes you're making. But it also does take forever. I mean, can you imagine if I were to do this on multiple images. Uh, can you imagine if I had to do this on every wedding image? That would be insane. Um, yep. So, and I, I won't make you guys sit here through this like while I make it perfect. I just do want to kind of show you the um, techniques. So here what I would do to kind of finish it up is make my brush a little bit bigger and again just kind of smooth these edges out a little bit more. Again, I'm trying to um, 
leave some of that natural shadow, but just make it really smooth. Make sort of the transition between the light and dark a little bit smoother. Okay, and I have an original pulled up so that you can see um, the difference that this made. It's starting to look really good. It's really hard for me to quit something when I know it's not perfect, but again, I don't want you guys to sit here forever and ever. So, um, okay, so let's turn our texture layer back on. And I don't know if you remember what it looked like, but I'll show you in a second. Um, but it just smoothed those shadows out. And then here I'll show you. I have uh, another one pulled up. Here, let me pull that out a little bit so you can see the difference. I mean, it's in a different spot on the screen, but you can see the difference. See that really shadowy, like patchy area here, and especially down on her um, jawbone. See what a difference that made already? And I haven't even touched, touched her um, texture yet. But yeah, it looks really pretty. I would go in down here and blend this a little bit more um, so it doesn't look like a um, foundation line of shame. You know what I mean? When like your neck doesn't match your face. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the texture layer. So you just click that. Scroll in a little bit. There's two ways to tackle texture. You can use your spot healing brush. Um, and I would not go with the healing brush tool where you have to pick a source every time. You can do it more quickly with the healing brush tool. Um, and just real quickly kind of go over wherever you see texture. Um, you can do, do, do it this way or with more difficult areas, you can come and take your clone stamp. Um, and that's just over here. It looks like a little, um, like those rubber stamps that you would maybe stamp an envelope with or whatever. Um, change your brush size. And this is where, again, you can take your, like a source, choose a source, alt click, and then patch that way. Um, but for me, I prefer to use the spot healing brush on this. And I'm just clicking over the texture I see real quickly. Um, yeah, again, I find this stuff really satisfying. It's just so fun to kind of see it come together for me, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, and you could get really, it really depends on how smooth you want the skin. But the further you zoom in and sort of the smaller you make your tool, the more natural it's going to look. Of course, that does take more time. You could do a real quick frequency separation fix, or you could go really in depth with something like this. Um, you know, maybe if somebody does have really tough skin, you might want to go to this, you know, these great lengths. Um, and if you just want to soften it up, you know, professionally but quickly, you know, you don't have to go to this, this um, extreme. And then I don't have an example right now of under eye circles, but let me try to show you another technique here. So let's use it on, there's a tiny wrinkle here. And I, I want to say too, she has beautiful skin. I don't think that you need to um, do this to skin. It's just if, you know, between you and your client, if you want something like this, this is the technique. Um, there's, it's really a great technique to know. So another way that you can touch up areas is by using dodge and burn. It's this little hand here. I've never been able to figure out what this icon is um, indicative of. It looks like a little, somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but it looks like a hand like making a circle. <laughs> I don't understand. Um, okay, so you can right click and then if you click dodge, this is a lightning tool, okay? So this is gonna sort of lift your shadows. Um, it would be similar to creating a brush in Lightroom and just lifting the shadow slider on the brush. Um, but let me make it real small and I'm gonna lighten this line up a little bit here. Make it a little smaller. I'm at four pixels, so this is obviously really tiny. Um, I'm gonna bring, yep, and then there, let's start here with range. So you can lighten the shadows, you can lighten the midtones, or you can lighten the highlights. Um, same with burn, you can darken the shadows, midtones, or highlights. Um, we're going to work on shadows, and I'm going to pull the exposure way down, probably to. Let me actually show you what happens if you do it um, with a higher exposure. See that? It's. Um, I don't know if you can see that, like I said on the screen recording, but you can see, I think, where it made a couple of um, really light lines there. So we don't want to go that far. And if you ever need to undo something you did, just hold down Control and Z and it'll delete. Um, so here, um, let me pull my exposure down on my shadow brush. We'll put it at 10 and see how that does. And you can just kind of paint over those that little bit of darkness there. Yeah, that's perfect. And I'm just erasing that line for her. And again, 
like would never um, erase such a young person's you know, normal, <clears throat> normal lines. I think that's a little outrageous. And I hate that for, you know, society that we feel like we can't have wrinkles or they're shameful or whatever. That's stupid. Um, you know, coming from someone who's old, <laughs> especially. Um, yeah. But anyway, again, it's just a good technique to know in case it's something your client wants or whatever. But you can even use, um, <clears throat> you can even use um, dodge the shadows on um, the skin texture to kind of lighten some of that up. Um, totally up to you. That's just another technique you can do. Um, but let's go back to our healing brush. Just continue to clean this up just a little bit. She has a um, piece of, what's that called? I didn't do a good job there. Um, not confetti. What is it? <laughs> it's definitely not confetti. Sparkles. Glitter. Glitter. She's got a piece of glitter. For this glitter, I would take my cloning tool, make it smaller, um, leave my opacity at 100 because I want to paste exactly, and I would just take a dark spot, pick a really dark spot, alt-click, and click up there. Okay, I got rid of the glitter, and I would probably just touch up her nose a little bit to match with the rest. Again, I've got my healing tool here and I'm just kind of painting over a little bit. Um, yep, and just anywhere you want to remove the texture, that's all you have to do is paint over with healing. Okay, yeah, that looks beautiful. You see how you can see, um, you can still see some texture. It just evened it out quite a bit. And this is not so drastic that she would look at this picture and go, wow, she really, um, you know, retouched my skin. Um, let me show you the, there's before, there's after with um, frequency separation. And again, I think I would go in here and clean this up a little bit more on the shadow down here. We'll go back to our color layer. I'm gonna turn, my, I, I turn the texture layer off so that I can see better um, where to blend, I guess. I, it's hard for me to explain, but if I had to do it this way, it would, I think confuse my eyes a little bit, so I just turn the texture layer off. And let's see what we can do with um, dodge. Click to my dodge tool. I'm gonna make it kind of big. And let's see if we dodge the shadows. Sometimes dodge will give you a little bit of like discoloration, which I think is what it's doing here. Yeah, that's not right. So what I'm gonna do is just Control Z and take away what I did there. Okay, yep, so let's try a different way. Because if you guys run into this, um, you know, I would like you to kind of have an example of how you can fix it. So let's go to our healing brush tool. Actually, let's we already did that, so let's try clone and see if we can clone that out a little bit. Make my brush a little bigger. Obviously, the bigger your tool is, the um, wider the effect is gonna be. Um, so let's take, what I wanna do in blending that is choose a sample color that's not going to um, completely erase it, but that's just gonna blend a little bit. So I think maybe back here on like the back of like her jaw maybe might be a good spot. Let's try it. So I'm just alt clicking and I have my opacity down. I might turn it down a little more. Here my opacity is at 25. And do you see where, um, again, I don't know about a screen recording if you will be able to see it, but there's a little um, addition symbol that pops up as I'm clicking, and it's showing me where the source is as it moves. Because you can only pick a source once and click once. And if you click in the same, you know, continually click in the same spot, your source will stay the same. But once you move, your source moves. And that's just Lightroom trying to, or Photoshop trying to um, save you, you know, from having to click every time, I guess. But sometimes it, it will move to a source that you don't want, so you kind of have to be careful with that. Um, let's see how that did. Yeah, that looks that looks really good. That looks really good. But yeah, there we go, guys. That's it. There's a little shadow right there that I'd probably clean up too, but um, again, I don't want to make you sit here through, you know, you know the technique, and that's it. So let me show you before. Let me try to kind of get them 
aligned here so you can really see and after let's zoom that in a little before after before after I mean look at that that's that's beautiful and it didn't take me really too long it honestly didn't um, you know again I would say this if I hadn't been talking through it I would have whipped through it but um, let me show you how to finish it up so what you can do is um, you can put these two your frequency separation layers into a folder um, so I'm gonna click texture and then I'm going to um, hold the shift button and click color so now I have them both selected and there's this little folder icon down here I'm just gonna grab any one of these and pull it down to the folder icon now they're in a folder or a group and I can see before and after just like this too so yeah that's pretty pretty satisfying when you look um, you know after you've done the work and you look back to see what you've done that's pretty cool to see um, so that's it and then you come up always to the um, top right here with these little four horizontal lines you'll click there and then you're gonna flatten your image that's gonna make it all one image again and then I would um, go do the levels trick to finish this off and I would probably just give it a little bit of pop there pull my blacks in a little and I would flatten that again and yeah then I would apply my finishing action and save but that's it so um, yeah I guess if you kind of want to slow it down and you could write it down step by step or you could just follow along and um, pause you know as you go but um, it, after you do this like three or four times you really get the hang of it and um, you won't have to keep looking at you know reminders of how to how to do it because it'll just become second nature after you've done it a couple times but I would love to see if you guys do this on your own work and you um, you know and you want to share like if you could show before and after that would I would love to see it so if you guys want to do that um, cool and yeah thank you guys for being here and for watching and that's it okay bye